You know, we recently had this prank call. Someone posing as David Koch called into the governor's office. And it's created quite a, quite a stir. Sure. Uh, what are your reactions to that? Well, first of all, I mean, on so many levels, this is an amazing event. Uh, first of all, the fact that a, uh, a blogger from Buffalo, New York, would be able to call in and simply by saying, hey, this is David Koch, and not have to actually give his number uh, to actually tell the chief of staff of the governor of Wisconsin that he dropped his cell phone in the toilet and therefore needed to do the call, and then calls back and is immediately put through to the governor player. So the fact is that uh, Walker takes this call and spends 20 minutes of what may have been or what may be the busiest week of his life talking to someone who he thinks might be, you know, uh, one of the Koch brothers, but he doesn't really know because he's never met them. And really, it was a very revealing conversation Again. about showed how eager he was to cultivate this relationship. The mere fact he took the call is striking because he won't talk to Democratic senators mm -hmm. or he won't talk to the legislators who, who are on the other side of this. He won't take their calls. Reporters have had a devil of a time trying to get the guy on the record other than very carefully staged and controlled press conferences. And yet, all the guy does is say that he's David Koch, and, and Scott Walker's on the phone with him. That spoke volumes. Just the fact that he took that call spoke volumes. Um, and it, you know, the governor has said over and over again, publicly, that this is all about uh, budget problems. This is about budget balancing. That what he's trying to do is, is just save money on on public pensions and, and health insurance benefits, and that it doesn't have anything to do with workers' rights or anything like that. Well, the, the, the call did a lot to dispel any of that notion, because what the, what the governor very clearly told to who he thought was David Koch is that this is indeed about, about unions, and it, it is about union busting. And that he said, "This is our moment. This is our chance to do what Ronald Reagan did with the, with, with the uh, the air traffic controllers." Uh, and and so, you know, that that cat's out of the bag now. Bill. And in Wisconsin, budget bills are supposed to be fiscal. They're not supposed to contain policy. Of course, fiscal matters always are policy items. But but the budget repair bill, which is required to fix the remaining five months left until the fiscal year ends on June 30th to, to make sure that the Wisconsin budget is in balance. It does contain a number of policy uh, matters that have created this huge explosion of emotion and division within the state of Wisconsin. Right. And what we're talking about are, in addition to the huge provision that would end collective bargaining mm -hmm. for public employees, which is what this is all about and has been about, as you go through this budget repair bill, there's a provision, for instance, that allows the transference of energy companies and energy entities to other corporations on a no-bid contract basis. Now, the Koch brothers, three of the companies that they own in Wisconsin are energy-related. There's a pipeline company and two other companies. Uh, and so one might gather from that or infer from that that and the fact that the Coke Industries just last week opened up a lobbying office right off Capitol Square here in Madison mm. with apparently seven employees, uh, some of them fairly well-known lobbyists in, in and, town. Uh, and so that sort of smacks of a potential sweetheart deal in the making where the governor would be in a position without any competitive bidding to sell these things off and then whatever private interest buys these power plants would be able to lease the energy back to the state. Problem. Uh, the problem is that, that there is that provision that is so striking. And given now the revelation of the, of the Koch conversation, imposter with Walker, and the detailing of the money that has come uh, to aid Walker from, from the Koch industry, you put all those pieces together, and it, it, it seems pretty evident from any citizens looking at that, that there's a very cozy, close, too close relationship between uh, the Koch brothers and, and, and Scott Walker. I think That's the other things that were so striking about the call is is how um, he was un, totally untroubled by um, some pretty sleazy political tactics. And, and the idea 
who he thought was David Koch says, you know, how about if we plant some troublemakers uh, in the crowd to, you know, to, to discredit the, the, uh, the opposition? And, and instead of saying, you know, that's unethical, it's wrong, can't go there, he said, oh, we thought about that. And the only reason that we are, we're not doing it is because we don't think it would work. It's not that we think it's wrong. We don't think it would actually be effective. Those kinds of things, and I think, really revealed how, how inherently political all this is and how this is really about power. And it's about tilting the playing field in favor of his own party and then trying to cement that tilted playing field in place. That's what this is all about. It doesn't have very much at all to do with budget balancing. It doesn't have to do with with pensions and health insurance benefits and all of that. This is about trying to kneecap political opponents and create a, a, a permanent advantage for his own party politically. Yeah. And you know, the Koch brothers, uh, very central to their overall agenda has been union busting. Mm -hmm. that, that has been something that has, has been a, a goal of the Koch brothers for a very long time. And the point here, is that if they can break the public employee unions in Wisconsin, which are very strong, this was the state in which public employee unions began. AFSCME started in Wisconsin. This is the first state to have collective bargaining for public employees in 1959. So this is the bedrock, not only of public employees, but a lot of uh, union employees. It's a very strong union state. If the unions can be broken here, they can be broken anywhere. They can be broken in Ohio, they can be broken in Pennsylvania, they can be broken everywhere in the country. So that's why Wisconsin is ground zero. And it is for a much larger issue than this budget repair bill. It is to consolidate the power of the wealthy in the hands of people like the Koch brothers to destroy the public employee unions, to pit the middle class against each other, to do as you suggest, create a greater monopoly in energy uh, distribution uh, without, within Wisconsin and throughout the nation. Uh, and finally, to restrict the, the people who vote in elections. What uh, they're aiming to do is really turn Wisconsin into a truly red state. And Wisconsin is not a red state. Years. This is not a Republican red state. It is not a Democratic blue state. This is a purple state. Most statewide elections go either way, but by a relatively narrow margin. Party. This state, and we're better for it, is a vibrant two-party state. It's been contested very strongly. It has swung back and forth between control of the Republicans and the Democrats, often divided government. We've had Republican governors, Democratic governors. It's been a very, very evenly divided state. The Republicans swept in 2010, just as the Democrats did in 2008 and 2006 here. Mm -hmm. The pendulum swings back and forth. To me, I don't care what, what party you are or where you fall on the political spectrum. It is dangerous to create a, a circumstance where one party uh, becomes such a dominant force and w where you effectively have a one-party state. That's what this is really all about, is, tr is they're trying to create a one-party state. And they're doing it in a state that is quintessentially purple. Uh, this is part of a national crusade. This is part of a very coordinated effort to bust unions, to, uh, to hurt Democrats to uh, cement political power for, for those who the Koch brothers favor. And Wisconsin is a pawn in that, in that game that they're, that they're playing. And, and, and I think it's important for people to understand that, that this has national ramifications. Mm -hmm. now, so the larger, uh, the larger plan of Walker and his counterparts, John Kasich in Ohio and Tom Corbett in Pennsylvania and across the country, uh, it's becoming more and more evident every day that these strikes here in Madison uh, go on. And as you know, they have spread now to Ohio and Indiana. Yes. I don't care whether you're a Democrat or a Republican or an Independent. It is in no one's interest to have elections that are effectively rigged. You know, look, elected officials serve us best when they serve in fear of what might happen in the next election. That's how we keep elected officials accountable to us and responsive to us, that's how we make sure that they listen to us, is when they have some reason to fear what might happen to them in the next election. Uh, the sad thing is that uh, these types of issues are so divisive. They really don't help the state of Wisconsin. And this is a state, like Minnesota and others, 
where uh, we, we tend to pride ourselves on overcoming partisan differences to come to an agreement, to come to a compromise, and to do what's best for the people of the state. That's clearly not, what, not what's happening here. This is a very divisive governor. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, 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 I don't know how it's all going to end. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's going to take years to repair the damage that's, uh, that's been, uh, that's been uh, foisted upon the people of this state. Of um, I think what Governor Walker might be doing, he may, he may have thought this was to invigorate his base, but I think what he's done is he's woken up a sleeping giant here in Wisconsin, and I think maybe across the country. And he may see this pendulum begin to swim back uh, and hit him right in the face uh, a lot faster than he ever thought it was going to. So any final thoughts before we let you go? Well, only that, uh, you know, um, these are, I think, amongst the most interesting and exciting, uh, you know, days certainly in Wisconsin, but even in the nation. I mean, this is just an amazing development. Uh, you know, when you see people uh, protesting every day for their, for their rights, and you see counter-protests uh, with equally vigorous passion, believe it or not, it's a good thing. I mean, I think people are connected now to public policy issues in a way that they haven't been. People are really much more aware of the connections between corporations and politics or unions and politics. I think this has been a huge education process for the people of Wisconsin, and I hope, I hope it goes beyond that, uh, because an engaged uh, electorate really plugged into these issues, and even with uh, uh, you know, a, a degree of uh, a confrontation, I think is a good thing. It's, it's what makes democracy stronger. So um, despite all of the, uh, the heartbreak and everything else uh, and, and a lot of the discouraging things that have happened, uh, there have been a lot of unbelievably positive things that have happened, too. So uh, you know, I'm, I just feel privileged and lucky to be, to be in the middle of it.